I've never started preaching on the pulpit. I started preaching going to people's house. Yeah. And if you want to be a, a good pe a preacher, the best place to start from is evangelism. Sometimes I meet some people and I say, how did you start preaching? And I say, no, we don't know how to preach. You've missed it. Because, you see, anybody who came here has a mentality that they are in the house of God, they are in the presence of God. So if I'm preaching to you here, it's different from when I come to your house preaching for you. It's a different. So if I can convince you in your house to give your life to Jesus, I am the best preacher ever. That's the most difficult task. Yeah. And when I was following my mentor, we about seven or six there about. Yeah. And everybody was hungry to preach in the church. Yeah. Everybody was hungry to preach one day in the church. And all of them, when they gave them the opportunity, they mess up. Yeah. When they finish preaching, they don't know what to do. Yeah. They give them two hours to preach. By uh, the moment they preach for 15 minutes, the sermons end. They don't know what they need to say. They give you two hours to preach. And by the time they preach for 15 minutes, all the message finished. And some of them you can see that they literally repeat the preaching all over again. That is the one major thing I will be teaching us is the power of evangelism. So I will go to people's house and preach to them. Yeah. I will go to people's house. Uh, I, I remember the first man's house I went, I said, Sir, the man was seated in front of the house. And I said, good morning, sir. Uh, I am here to uh, share something with you that will change your life forever. He says, sir, who sent you? And I said, God. Eh? Okay, come, come. The man will put my head inside his bedroom. <laughs> You know, I can imagine what the man was thinking. What will you tell me that to change my life forever? He said, come, I follow him to the bedroom. Then I preached to him and he started crying. And I prayed for him. When I came home, he started to pray for the children. I prayed for the children. Then I move on. And by the time I came back to my house, many people were in the house and said, you came to this person's house when you pray for the son who was sick, the son get healed. I bring my son. Can you pray for my son? Any time I go to evangelism and I pray for people, by the time I come back home, many people are in the house waiting for me to come back. Yeah. Yeah. So, the house that I live in, people call the place powerhouse. Yeah. Powerhouse. There are people who came to the house and they were healed. I wasn't there. So they started calling the house powerhouse. So when I start ministry first, the name was Powerhouse International. People gave the name. In the house. Yeah. Sometimes by the time I wake up from bed, many people are in the house waiting for me to come and pray for them. Yeah. Many people are waiting for me to come and pray for them. And the first time they gave me the opportunity to preach, it wasn't an opportunity given to me personally. Our spiritual father invited a guest speaker from abroad, and the guest speaker was praying, was preaching for somebody. And when he finished, he would come to our church also and preach. So the spiritual father went to bring this guy to our church, and he wasn't coming. And the worship team has worshipped and praised God, and the man wasn't coming. So the resident pastor came and called the seven pastors and said, uh, Daddy is not coming. Bishop is not coming. Is there anybody who have a word who can preach? So the person can be preaching till so Bishop come. Everybody say they don't have a word. Everybody say they are not prepared. Yeah. And I was the only one who has never preached in the church before. And I said, I have a message. And they look at me like this. We've never seen you preach before. We've never seen you preach before. 
and it happened in a way that the resident pastor was looking for a way to say, just sit down, let's wait for Papa to come. But when he do something like that, it will look like discrimination. So he said, okay, my God, you have never put here before, but when you go, just raise prayer point and leave people to pray, don't preach. I said, okay. And you can see that the guy was afraid for me. Because if you have never preached before, and you stand here, the way your voice will be breaking. You don't know whether you should hold the microphone like this, or like this. Whether you should be looking in the air and be preaching, or close your eyes. Then I got there. And I said, lift up your voice towards heaven. Lift up your hands towards heaven as a point of contact with the Holy Spirit. Then I begin to pray. All of a sudden, people started falling. People started vomiting. People started screaming. Yeah. And I said, yes, the revival is here. The power of God is here. The Holy Ghost is people started screaming. People started vomiting. Yeah. And at that particular moment, the bishop also came. And he couldn't believe what happened in that church that particular day. Yeah. And almost everybody testified that from the genesis of that church, they have never seen something like that before. Yeah. And it is no church when somebody falls under the anointing or somebody is manifesting, they will carry the person to the back. Or they will carry the person to the washroom. They don't do deliverance. It's just a teaching ministry. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. When somebody falls down, they will come and carry the person. Or some, some people will cover the person and make sure the person is there. So the person gets up. Nobody will go and pray for the person. Nobody will go and deliver the person. Yeah. So when people were vomiting, people were vomiting, rolling on the ground, speaking in tongues, it blew everybody's mind. And he said, how long have you been preaching? Where have you been preaching? And I said, me, from one house to another. <laughs> yeah. From one house to another. And you see, there is a divine empowerment that comes upon you when you begin to witness to people. The easiest way you can grow in the Lord is evangelism. There. Yeah. Evangelism. One day I told God that how come the strange miracles that happen when I go out and pray for people are not happening in the church? And the Lord said to me, those anointing only manifest when you go out there to evangelize. Yeah. Some of you, when you go out to pray for some people, you'll be shocked the testimonies they'll give. Yeah. You'll be shocked the encounters that they are going to have. But here, yeah, those things will not happen in the church. No. It's an anointing that flow to witness it. And you grow it. You grow it. That's how I started my prophetic ministry. I didn't start prophesying in the church. Yeah. I go to people's house to witness to them. Then the word of knowledge will come. Yeah. Then he said, yes, my son, my firstborn. I said, I'm going to pray. He's going to get a miracle job. But things just happen like that. And sometimes, by the time I come back home, many people are in my house. Say, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? I also bring my son. I heard that you pray for this person's son, and the person got a job. I bring my son. I heard that you pray for that person's daughter, and she got pregnant. Me too, I've been buried for these years. You know, Africans are not like some people I know. You know, and then people come like that, envelope, seed, money, just like that. A small room, a small house. Yeah. So sometimes, if I don't go to evangelism, I'll just be in the house, seated on the plastic chair, and people be coming like that and be going. People be coming like that and be going. Now, guess what? My evangelism employed my landlord. Sometimes people come there and be waiting for me for long. So he started selling provision. 
it started selling drink, snack, <laughs> biscuit, water, and those things. And the people were buying. <laughs> people were buying. And when, she's a Muslim woman. She was selling anointing oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So people come. Hear me? When I relocated less than two months, the shop collapsed. Who <laughs> buy again? No, people. If this is not a, a, pop, a popular place, people pass. It's inside the house. And not less than 100 people who come and take just for prayer. Yeah. You see, I am trying to get to a certain place in my life again. And my major problem is the mentality of the Caribbeans. Because there are certain things I'm very careful about it. Yeah. There are certain things I can do, I'm very careful. There are certain instructions, I'm very careful. There are certain preachings, I'm very careful. And living too careful has been a limitation I place on my own life. Yeah. And the problem has to do with the mentality of the people I am preaching to. Who don't want to grow and understand spiritual things and spirituality? Yeah. I go to people's house. Somebody seated in a wheelchair. I said, "Do you believe in Jesus?" I say yes. Get up. Then all of a sudden, yeah, all of a sudden, the pastors will come and say, "You know, I wanted to come to our church and preach." And I said, "No, the anointing that is at work in me is not for church." So when I see some young young people, some people who are, who are who are looking for invitation, looking for puppy to preach, please prepare yourself, groom yourself. So the fact the time you mount the puppy and preach, people know that you carry something. Yeah, people must know that you carry something. There must be some impartation. Yeah, there must be some impartation. I was telling one of my sons that you know. There are times I, I, I go to church or places to preach, but I wasn't fully prepared. Yeah, I wasn't fully prepared, but I know that even if I couldn't preach, I will manifest the spirit, so I am covered. So how much more people who the only thing they can do is to preach and teach, you have a long way to go to make impact in the life of people. Preparation.